Have you ever wondered why there was a scramble for Africa by the colonial powers? <laughs> Hot cake things. Well, it can only mean that Africa is a gold mine and they saw it. But the question is, do we see it? Well, it's high time we did. And maybe, just maybe, if we knew a few people who have tapped into that gold mine, maybe we'll just see it. <laughs> I'll help you with that. I love cars. Luxurious, flashy, big cars. And you just roll down the street in them feeling cool. Mm. Now, just like me, if you love cars, or if you know anything about cars, then I'm betting you must have heard about the Chevrolet Volt, which was voted the most fuel-efficient car by the United States Environmental Protection Agency in January 2014. It is an electric car that combines electric mode and gasoline consumption. It has super technology, design, it is eco-friendly. And definitely a nice set of wheels to roll down the street in. Uh, uh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Chevrolet Volt. <laughs> now you know the car, but I'm betting you don't know who Jelani Aliyu is. Do you? <laughs> I'm sure some of you are going to cheat. I'm going to go on Google to find him, but don't worry. I'm going to give you enough information about who Jelani Aliyu is in just a bit. Jelani Aliyu, a Nigerian, Nigerian from Sokoto, to be precise, has earned a great name in the auto industry. That's the car industry, in case you're not sure. He is a prominent designer for the General Motors Renaissance Center AKA the second biggest car manufacturer in the world. <laughs> Jelani Ali is the designer of the Chevy Volt. What you just saw earlier, that amazing creation. Jelani Ali, a Nigerian, designed it. <laughs> and this car has won many awards, including the 2011 North American Car of the Year. Did you hear that? Now, since 2010, the car, the Chevy Volt, has recorded, guess what, more than 150,000 units <laughs> of sale in the United States and Canada. Guess what? At the price of $37,000. That is, by the way, 13.4 million Naira. Freaky, freaky, Jelani, you are doing well. <laughs> now, the Chevy project started with hundreds of entries, but his proposal was chosen out of all of them. Jelani designed the Chevrolet Volt to capture the spirit of the African wilderness and the magnificence of the marine life of the African Atlantic shore. He left his post as the lead exterior designer of General Motors in 2017 and became the Director General of the Nigerian Automotive Design and Development Council, the NADDC, patriotic Nigerian. And the council has actually been doing a lot of amazing work. I mean, listen to this. Imagine, if you may, in the not too distant future, a Nigeria of unbelievable accomplishments. A Nigeria so advanced that most of the problems we now face would by then have been relegated to the pages of history forever. That Nigeria is not just a possibility, it's an imperative destination, one that we must reach, as it may very well be our only hope for the very survival of our nation. Well, there you have it. Now, Jelani thanks his parents for their support, for always allowing him to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. For their understanding and support. My son, you can do whatever you want to do whenever you want to. I trust you 
you have my support, I will support you in anything you want to be. It is your life to live and not my life. Good luck, my son. Such amazing parents. They don't sound like Nigerian parents. But we thank God. We will have parents like, we, have, we love our parents. Nigerian parents, the way they are. <laughs> Kudos to Jelani and thank you for repping the African nation and the Nigerian country. Well, I'm very sure some of you know about the prolific songwriter, singer, performer, and entrepreneur, Akon. Ghetto living in the ghetto, in the ghetto, living in the ghetto. Originally from Senegal, Senegal. I like the feel. Like I like I like how that name rolls off my tongue, Senegal. Now Akon is building a new 2,000 acre city, and guess what it's called? Okay, I'll tell you. Akon City. would have thought and he just had to name it after himself like Akon, Akon, Akon City. <laughs> it's all right. You know it would actually be nice if we have something like or someone like Obio have his own city. The Hobio city. It's gonna be a beautiful city to live in. If I tell you say I love you Obio City. The Akon City is intended to be a futuristic city. Um, uh, Mr. Akon, so please tell us, is it that you have so much money in the whole world that you decided to open a city? There was nothing else for you to do to open that to open a city? Please tell us, Mr. Akon. Looking at Akon City as to become the beginning of Africa's future, and our idea is to build a futuristic city that incorporates all the latest technologies, cryptocurrencies, and also the future of how African society should become in the future. Available in all 54 African countries, it is going to be the Acontainment Solar City. Oh, with 65 villas that run on its own renewable solar energy. It's also going to have its own international airport. No cash! The first city to run on cryptocurrency, which Akon introduced in 2017, and guess what he named it? Acoin. Akon calls the Acoin currency a uniting cryptocurrency for Africa. And he says it is intended to empower Africa. Hum. Why did I make that sound? That just sounds very African. Empower Africa. Akon describes the city as real life Wakanda. <laughs> he also describes it as Black Panther on steroids. Black, Black Panther on steroids. I don't know why Forrest Whitaker would say Black Panther. Black Panther. Black, Black Panther on steroids. He also hopes that the city is going to rival Dubai someday as an entertainment city for tourists. I can't wait. I can just imagine. The city is expected to experience series of developmental stages. The first stage is already underway since 2019. And the second stage is beginning in 2025. Now, Akon also believes that crypto is the savior of Africa and will bring power back to the people in Africa. Thank you, Akon. Kudos and we cannot wait for the Akon City, Acoin. An Obio City. He can call me, call me. I'm the Obio City, Obio guy. My name is David Doe. We need to talk. I need to start my Obio City. Call me. And next on our list is Tommy Adeyemi. Chapter one. Pick me. It's all I can do not to scream. I dig my nails into the marula oak of my staff and squeeze to keep from fidgeting. Beads of sweat drip down my back, but I can't tell if it's from dawn's early heat or from my heart slamming against my chest. Hi, I am Tomi Adeyemi, the author of Children of Blood and Bone, a Nigerian-American novelist who has recently been named to the Forbes 
under 30 lists. Uh, she wrote the book, Children of Blood and Bone, a New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. And the book is about to be made into a movie in Hollywood. Are you? Levels. Tommy Adeyemi studied English literature at Harvard University. Oh, I think that this abroad used to change Nigerian parents. Because my mother would rather die than allow me to read English literature at Harvard University. But her parents did. Apparently, it was not enough anyways for Nigerian parents. Listen to this. The New York Times best-selling book has acted. <laughs> People, a lot of times, they focus on the age, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm Nigerian, so uh, that means every day I'm not a doctor is like a failure to my parents, so I kind of <laughs> have to sorry, yeah. amp it up. Children of Blood and Bone was released in 2018 and became a New York Times bestseller number one. And it was on the list for 25 weeks straight. Guess what overthrew it? Her second book, Children of Virtue. Vengeance! Children of Virtue and Vengeance, released in 2019, immediately topped the list and became number one. <laughs> Nigeria, we held I feel very grateful that this world comes from my world, you know, like working on translations with my mom for hours and hours. So I always tease my parents because they didn't teach me Yoruba, like I have an older brother and a little sister, and they didn't teach us Yoruba because they wanted to talk about us while we were in the room. So they used Yoruba as a secret language, and so every time I meet another first-generation kid and they're speaking their language, I like turn them out. I was like, that could have been us. <laughs> that could have been us. Now, Tommy uses the book to highlight societal problems, and she draws inspiration from books like Harry Potter, Avatar, as well as the Black Lives Matter movement, and the West African mythology, like the Yoruba culture and language. It's more of the fact that you pick up this book and you see a magical, dark-skinned black girl on the cover. When you open the pages, you see blacks of all shades on the cover. You see us celebrated as the hero. You see us in epic battles. You see us get these big, twisty romances. We have this story for all of us to celebrate because it's like even all Nigeria is not Yoruba. You know, I meet Igbo, I meet Hausa, and, but like Zaley is still for all of us. Seven figure movie deal back in 2017 before the book was even released. How exciting is it to be? Because I just heard somewhere that they said that this is going to be made into a movie now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh the Children of Blood and Bone is currently in development by Disney's Fox and Lucas Films. Here's something to hold on to while we wait. Our slate is expanding further with a story that will introduce a new hero and explore an original world that feels perfectly paired with Lucasfilm storytelling. We're proud to bring to the screen author Tomi Adeyemi's New York Times best-selling novel, Children of Blood and Bone. This story will center around a young African girl's heart-racing quest to restore magic to her forsaken people, the Magi. Tomi was recently included in the Time 100's list of most influential people of 2020. We're proud to be partnering with the 20th Century Studios on this coming of age adventure. <laughs> Look at that video. Oh my God. I really feel like I've watched it and I love it. My precious. Kudos and congratulations to Tomi Ademi and we cannot wait for that movie. <laughs> Designing the Chevy, a whole city, and having movies made about your creations. <laughs> Gold mine, I told you. I'll bring you more Luminous on the next episode. My name is Fawn Peter and this is Underdog TV. So please subscribe, like, and share to your friends and family. And I'll see you next time.